Happy Monday, everyone. It's Michelle Lloyd here, founder of United Art Space. I appear live on a Monday to share some top tips or questions that I get asked. And today, I want to talk a little bit about why it's so hard to sell your art. And I've had quite a lot of people message me recently to say, I think it was Laura who said to me, you know, I've worked in other jobs before where I've sold frames and other items and I've managed to sell no problem. When it comes to my own art, I just can't do it. I just can't say it's for sale. And Lloyd Lewis, Lloyd is one of my hub members and Lloyd said to me, you know, he's a really confident guy and he has a kickboxing academy. He's a world champion kickboxer and he joined my hub membership because he's a portrait artist alongside that. And he said, you know, I can sell my kickboxing academy places and all of that fine. My own art, the portraits, just struggle. I can't do it. And we recently had quite a, new, a lot of members join the hub and there have been a lot of people saying the same things that I just feel so scared saying that my art works for sale or I feel like when someone says, oh, how much is this? I just panic and I just can't do that part. And it's really, really common. So that's what I want to say, first of all, it's so, so common for this to happen. And I just wanted to highlight some of the reasons why I see this happening in case it helps you and give you a few solutions to how you can overcome it. So number one, of course, there are lots and lots of reasons why this happens, why artists feel this way. I'm just summarizing this today into three main points. But the first reason, is your mindset around selling your own art. And it's because quite often we don't realize how we feel about selling sometimes. And we often, when we start to look and become self-aware, we realize that we do have this weird relationship with selling and what selling means. And I think that it sends us into a panic because when you're an artist making and expressing how you feel and expressing what you see and it's very 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 personal it almost the selling part is a completely different way of thinking and so it, it can throw people because it's going from the making something being very very personal to oh my gosh it's selling and your mindset and the way you feel about that it can really throw you and make you feel a bit like, ooh, I don't want to do this. And the more you process how you feel and become more self-aware about how you feel and why you feel that way, it can really, really help um, to understand why you've got this block around selling and why it feels so awkward. But one reason is it's so personal. So you make art because it's how you see and feel something. And let's use Lloyd as an example. His kickboxing is a service. It's fulfilling a need. And this brings me on to the second point of art is a, it's something that we desire. And it's easier to sell things that fulfill a need than it is that fulfill a desire. So the kickboxing has a clear transformation. You know, join my kickboxing academy and I will help you learn how to be a kickboxer at a certain belt. I don't know how it works. Sorry, Lloyd, if you're watching. Um, but there's a very clear transformation. And the same with Laura with the frames. There's a clear transformation. I'm selling frames because they're there to frame your artwork and make them more sellable and finish them and complete them. And there's a transformation that's easy to sell. And when we're selling, that's what it's all about. It's how this product or service is going to help or make someone's life better. And then that can be hard for an artist to understand. Why is this gonna make someone's life better? This is just little old me. I've just painted this, um, just scribbled this down. It doesn't feel like it's worth anything to you, but actually to someone else it is. And so this, awareness around how we feel about our own art but understanding that just because you feel that way doesn't mean that someone else will feel that way is the starting point so it all 
people hear me talk about mindset all the time because it is the thing that underpins everything. And so if you do feel this frustration around selling, it's all related down to your mindset. So being really clear on how that makes you feel, what's stopping you, why don't you want to put a price on it? Write it down. I don't want to put a price on because of this. It's about really just becoming really, really conscious of how do I feel? And then you can look at it and go, that's just silly. Or it might be justified and you can do something about it. And then also realizing that what I was talking about just now about the need versus the desire, that art does fulfill a need in people and it does bring happiness and joy to people's lives and it does brighten up a room or it causes and creates conversation. So there is more to art than we actually than we actually pay attention to. And I think another reason it's difficult is because as artists, we go down a rabbit hole of making and it's all about us and in that moment of how we're feeling and, and getting something right and getting the colors right and all of this. And then coming up to the surface to start thinking about selling is a completely different, it's a, like a different part of the brain. The making is the right side of the brain and it's the, you know, contemplating textures and, and all of that. It's right side, it's how we feel, it's therapeutic. And the selling part is the left side. It's more logical and it's more about pricing it and looking at the work in terms of what this is doing for people. And so I think that the more you can become self-aware and focus on how selling makes you feel, and why you have this ickiness around giving the price or why would somebody want my work? That's something else that I hear people saying, like why would someone else want to buy it? Or the old one of feeling like an imposter or you haven't used the right materials and you feel like a fraud. All of these things, address them and bring them to the surface. And then in terms of creating that desire, when Lloyd can sell his martial arts, even though it's his company, there's a need there. And when Laura was selling the frames, again, there's a need there, but it's very easier, it's much easier, sorry, to sell other people's things than it is our own because we have to be a salesperson for our own artwork or our own services. And we've got to have confidence in what we're selling and what we're producing. Because to sell something, you need to be able to explain what it is, explain why it exists, and help people connect with it. Because it isn't enough for someone to just see something and want to buy it. And so that becomes another part that makes it difficult when you don't feel confident about what you're doing or your place in the world. That again, it, it kind of is another reason, but it relates back to mindset again. And the way to feel more confident in what you're doing and to have those conversations that flow is to tap into your why. So people who are inside my hub membership, that's what we're working on at the moment. It's working on why your artwork exists, learning more about yourself and where your art fits and having conversations with people. And the more you dive into all of that, the more you will feel confident about your work. And it's about taking those baby steps and going for it. And if someone wants to buy it, don't knock it. <laughs> and find out the best next steps to take to get that work sold and feel confident about it. So hopefully that helps. So to summarise the reasons why it feels difficult, it's personal. It's something so personal. You're selling something of yourself and that's hard. It's easier to sell other people's things than it is your own. It's hard because it's another part of the brain when you've gone into making mode to flip to something else. It's a different way of thinking. And art is a desire rather than a need. So some things are easy to sell because they're fulfilling a need that we can describe, a transformation. And there will be the same kind of transformation in your own art in a different way though. It might be that it is to go on someone's wall and bring color and energy into a room. Or it might be that 
it's to help someone remember a certain place that's special to them. It might be to celebrate flowers. It could be anything. <laughs> but there is, there is always a reason why people will buy your artwork. And the more, just have the belief in that, that there is a reason behind your work and there is a place for your work. And that's why it's hard to sell. So become self-aware of those negative conversations that you're having with yourself around selling and start to reframe it and start to address it because if you don't you'll always struggle to sell so the more you can start to bring awareness to that and do something about it and switch your mindset around the easier it will start to become and it won't happen overnight but if you start to just be aware of this over time you'll you'll notice massive shifts in fact we've had members join our hub membership just a month ago and already people over there are saying how they started to sell already and it's because of their mindset. They realized that they were getting in their own way. And it's literally, it's taken them a month, some people, a month to just turn it around. I had one lady message me this week um, to say, I've been an artist for four years and I've never sold anything. And this week I've sold four pieces of my artwork. <laughs> and it was just mindset shifts just thinking differently about things. So, um, right, I'm gonna check the questions. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Lovely to see you all, happy Monday everyone, and happy August, we're in a new month. Laura, hello Helen, Linda, Simone, hi Marita, Deborah, Anna, uh, Namrita, Namrita, hopefully I've said your name right, Lizbeth, hello, Shannon, Stella, Sinead, Deb, Bavana, hello, Julie, Peter. Oh, hello, it's lovely to see you all. Hello, Jane. Ah, oh, Linda, I was thinking about you yesterday. I think you must have flashed up on something. Hello from sunny Yorkshire. I'm going there next week with the children. I'll be going to York and Leeds. Um, Catherine, Tina, Katie, hello. It's lovely to see you all. Simone, Faber, Stephen from Glasgow, hello. Jeanette's tuning in from Australia. Angie, hello. Um, and it doesn't matter that you're like, you can watch it on the replay. Katrina, hello, Haviva. Jane, an experienced artist commissioned one of my mini paintings and collected it this morning. Amazing. And paid more than the asking price as she said she thought I'm underpricing. <sighs> Feeling quite uplifted by that this morning. That's amazing. Well done, Jane. Um, and that's an interesting point. We're working, so for hub members, members of United Arts Space who are inside my hub membership, we are focusing on selling in August. And so we're gonna be taking you through the steps of selling. So there'll be more information. Um, I just sent an email out this morning actually to let you know the dates for that. Hello, Michelle from South Africa. I have found who my people are, it's amazing. You're amazing, thank you. Oh, I sold two paintings this last month, yay! Gosh, I've got to say, we're getting so many good, great news posts inside the membership from people starting to sell, and it's just, it's just amazing to see. Hello, Romeo, how are you? Um, Stacey's on. Hello, Stacey. Just taking a break from writing up my why to listen. Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, Beth, hello. Yeah, Jane's review plan doing. Hello, Tina. Yeah, Aviva said it really is personal. It is. Um, where's that comment gone? It is personal, isn't it? And and um, and I think that's why it can be difficult to talk about or to even put a price on something so personal sometimes. And there is a I see an artist a big mental shift sometimes in producing something so personal and then someone else having it and someone else buying it. Um, so, you know, I see people giving work away, I think for that reason, because they don't want, the, it's almost like they don't want to put a price on that personal therapy that you've done possibly. So it's interesting to just bring awareness to that and start to see it as, you know, that was the process that you went through. Then there was an outcome, which is the artwork, and then someone else, combine that and there's nothing wrong with that that's like a beautiful transaction it's something that you did you processed with an output and someone else would like to buy it um and i think a lot of the time the mindset is also around 
the perception that other people have of you selling things. Um, and I think there might be fear around that, you know, how will I be judged if I'm selling my own artwork? And maybe there's been comments before from people about selling artwork and it might make you feel a bit uncomfortable. It might be one comment, usually it's one comment that someone made to you in a lifetime that has created this big block. And so being aware of that and reframing that and knowing that it's absolutely fine to make artwork and sell it and lots of people do and lots of people enjoying buying art. I for one am one of them. I really, I know lots of people that really love investing in art and buying art and that's nice. And they're the people that you want to find. So, um, Ariane, thank you for doing this live. You're so welcome. I love your business name, Business with Kindness. Isn't that a nice name? Um, hello, Ryan. This is super helpful. I always feel embarrassed about asking for money for something creative, especially at the moment when people are losing their jobs, etc. Your point about bringing joy to people has really made sense. Um, this is a great point to make. Um, because looking at the situation we're in right now, I totally appreciate what you're saying when there's people losing their jobs and this can create fear in selling something um, because you're aware of that and you've got to be careful of that perception of, of the world as you see it because one thing I will say is I totally sympathise and I understand the situation, but there will always be people losing their jobs. I know it's heightened at the moment because of what's going on, um, but there will always be something in life, something terrible happening. There'll always be people deprived of something in certain ways, and it's just life, unfortunately. And as, as sad as it is, um, it I think to reframe that one is to say that that is life, but... There are people who do like investing in art and also the more that you can be a role model for the people to be making a living from your art, you, you know, it spreads that to other people who maybe have lost their job and think, I could maybe do that too. And it might, might open doors for them. Or, you know, at the very least, there are people out there that want to buy art. So if you hold back because of that fear, which rightly so, I understand why. But what you're doing is, it's damaging your own career and you're also potentially preventing other people buying from you that want to buy from you so I think it's a really good point to make Ryan because it's happening to all of us and this fear that we see around us through the media and through real life stories as well can affect our own decisions and our own um, careers and and the ways that we put ourselves out to sell. So I think that was a really good point to raise. And it's something again, that we need to bring back to ourselves, but keep moving forward. So, um, and I like what you said around that as well about feeling embarrassed about that, because maybe there's other people that haven't got a job right now. So I would totally write that down, write, writing things down makes things easier to process and look at objectively. And to come up with the alternatives so but yes art does bring joy to people and right now what I will say is it is bringing huge joy and art sales are on the up because people have been redecorating because they've been in lockdown they are making their spaces more personal people are investing in art because of that reason it's making them feel um, more connected to the world and to people and artists and it's reinvesting there are people that want to buy art to help and so yes there is a place for it 100 percent, and it brings so much joy in so many ways hello jenny dory hello i was thinking about you too yesterday <laughs> julie when selling this is a great question is there a reason why people sell for 9.99 or and 10 pounds um Yes, so psychologically, it's a psychological trigger. So £9.99, although we know that's only one pence off £10, psychologically, the nine is less than the £10. So um, by even though it's by one pence, psychologically, when people are scanning, it's £9.99 just feels so much more cheaper. £10 is in the next bracket. So it's a total psychological, just a little shift. It's crazy, but it it, it is, it does work. So 
Uh, Simone says, I've never deliberately created my art to sell. I started yesterday on my collection and I'm not happy with the way they came out. Somehow I feel if I was making them for myself, I'd feel differently. So yes, I, I, that's in the seven keys, which is the framework that we work on, the why making art that you are passionate about is the number one key. So making art for, it's for yourself, um, through your own eyes and through what you feel, but of course it, it will be for someone else. Um, but that's the most important thing. And I think it depends on what kind of artist you are. Some artists work great to briefs and working for other people. Some people don't, they have to make art that just is a, an expression and then you find your place. So, um, but that's good to know Simone because now you can start to adjust what you're making. Cause if it doesn't feel right, then that's great to know because you need to start thinking, why doesn't it feel right? And you're starting to do that and then you can tweak. Erica, hello from South Africa. Namrita, I did pronounce your name right. Thank you for letting me know. Melissa, evening from New Zealand. Faber, I had an interesting experience when talking to a commercial gallery about my pricing. I told them my prices based on the hub pricing formula, only to be told they wouldn't be able to sell my work at my prices as I am unknown. Aspiring artist, plus they take a 50% commission, which would make it too expensive. So if I wanted to try selling my work there, I had to accept their prices. On balance, I think it's worth taking the hit as I might not have other opportunities to sell that work. And then I can't see the rest of the message, sorry. Um, yeah, so this goes back to every place has their own pricing structure. So every, every gallery will have an entry price point and a ceiling price point. And to be able to sell in their gallery, you do need to fit in their pricing. Now, it doesn't mean to say that your artwork isn't worth that because if you go somewhere else, they might have the price point where your work fits. And so it does depend on where you put it. But that being said, if you are starting out and you have an opportunity and you're not taking a loss, if you can price to fit in that gallery, this is what Sharon did. Sharon priced her work and she had to adjust her pricing to fit with the gallery that she was represented by. And it worked out great because they sold lots of her work, but it's just making sure you don't underprice it. Does that make sense? Julie, I'm in East Yorkshire, so if you're this way, please bring your children to look around my farm and see the animals. Oh, Julie, I will message you. I'm in West Yorkshire though, um, but I will check and see how far you are. Hello Carly, thanks for your advice, taking notes and thinking about my work, lovely. Thomasina, hello from Ireland. Camille from Chicago land, I love that message, hello. Oh, I love this, Stacey's got a feeling she's gonna sell two paintings, I can feel it in my bones. Bavana, I've started with my mini project, but when I am doing one of my artworks, I feel like some, doing something else what should I do um I'm going to stick this one's about selling Vana. I know you're a hub member so put that question inside the hub community group um because I definitely need more information on that to be able to answer it um and this one's this one today is on selling but we will definitely help you inside the hub lovely good morning Sophia I like that phrase a beautiful transaction and it really is Katie says, I found that my work is becoming more personal as a result of the seven keys and it is therefore becoming easier to make and be excited about. This is music to my ears. Can't thank you enough for the hub. <laughs> Katie, I'm so pleased to hear it. This is what happens. It, it, like your artwork just starts to feel freer and happier and lighter and what you'll find Katie then when you come to sell, because selling is all about just authenticity and, and learning more about what people, why they want to buy. And, and so it just ends up becoming easier and easier as you go through the seven keys. So I'm really excited for you. Uh, Ryan says, thank you, you've made everything clear again. Your videos are incredible. Oh, thank you, Ryan, that makes my day, thank you.
it makes sense. Faber says good. Oh, Beth's going to a gallery this morning. So this is really helpful. Amazing. Oh, Dory, thank you, Michelle. I think about you too. My confidence and drive evokes from all of your teachings. Oh, gosh, I love you all so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, Aviva says, I often feel like this, so thank you for raising the point. I suppose it's about being true to oneself. It certainly is. It really, really is. Yeah, this is such a great point from Thomasina. So I love the way you said career. It helps a person own what you do. It certainly does. And this is your career and it's your future. And it's, that's another thing with the mindset is thinking about what it is. It's not just, it might just feel like just a hobby or just you've just chucked this together or, um, and it's starting to reframe that, you know, so much more than that. So, and some, if something's just taking you a few minutes um, with a biro, it doesn't mean it doesn't have a place in the world. And um, so, yeah. Right, I'll just read a couple more um, and then I have to go. Um, so when doing markets, I can see people's reaction to prices. I set. I used to be embarrassed, now I stand tall. I like that because, you know, confidence is about the way you have your posture as well as how you speak. If someone asks how I can set such prices, I tell them a little about it and that I have set myself an hourly rate and also there's all the learning hours. Some things take a long time to master, but once you can, um, once you do, can be produced in a short time so I factor in learning time now yes wonderful Yvette hello uh when I started painting I was scared that I will not be able to do it again oh yeah in fact Jane's on and she said to me as well I, when she first saw oh, my gosh was that a fluke that fear is normal I put all my paintings up in my reception in my guest house and everyone wanted to buy it and I did not want to then one day one of my guests said to me Am I being selfish? <laughs> that made me realise I need to sell it because they want what you share. They want to share your talent. Yeah, I love your videos. Thank you, Yvette from South Africa. Yeah, it's a great point. It is um, about, you know, you've got to think to yourself if you're holding this back, you are preventing people actually enjoying buying your art. There are people who enjoy spending money on art. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it, and it goes back to that point that Ryan made about, you know, when there's other people struggling, and there will always be people struggling. And so we can't let that stop us. Um, but we can be mindful of that and do things to help others, you know. Um, but we can't let it stop us growing into the person that we can be. Um, just like there are people starving all around the world, but we don't stop ourselves from eating. Um, and so making a living from your art and and sharing that is important it is important for you and i think that if there is something stopping you around other people um then you can build that into what you do you know you can give back and help other people so the more success you have the more good you can do for others and that's a great way of looking at it that's how i look at it the more the more money I make and the more success I have, the more people I can serve and the more people I can impact. And that shift in my, for my mindset was great because that makes me step up and sell more because I know that I can have a bigger impact. So these things, the words that you tell yourself, bring them to the surface and reframe them. I can't tell you how much it will help. So have a lovely, lovely day. I am going to head now. So. Any Hub members who are watching, I'm going to be back on Thursday inside the Hub talking about pricing and then we'll be looking at selling for the whole month. And um, for those who are in the Hub, I'll be back next Monday with a live video and I just hope you all have the most wonderful week. So sell with confidence. <laughs> Take care, everybody, and I'll speak to you soon. Okay, bye.